Hello, it's Andy Graham of the Ask Andy Show. It's, uh, I've traveled nonstop for 16 plus years, went to 90 countries. This is Bob, Bob W. He says he's a handsome one. He's looking in the, he said, we, get the, we can look at the uh, screen here and look at ourselves. So we're supposed to be looking at the camera, but we kind of look at the screen, right? Oh, yeah. But he's traveled, uh, traveled for what, eight years? Yeah, from uh, October of 2003 until October of 2011. So he's, he's actually a traveler, a hobo traveler. Oh, I just added the hobo part. The traveler, he's a traveler in remission right now because he's been in Vilcabamba for a couple years. And he's got a visa to Ecuador. Okay, I've been quizzing him on this. He says he has nothing to talk about. It. Why, why do you think you're not an attorney? <laughs> well, you know, I'm not. I, a, I, I, really, I really get okay, offended when somebody the, deflects to an attorney thing. Here's the reason why I do that. Because they change the law frequently. Good so, uh, the tr now, they grandfather you in. So, in other words, uh, now... You need to have a birth uh, a birth certificate and a police record, a postie certified. Okay. Now, when now three years ago, four years ago, you didn't need either of them. If you got your visa four years ago, you wouldn't have to get them now. Well, yeah, but but so you're grandfathered in. So a guy who got his visa two three years ago can tell you what the requirements were then. Okay. But they changed them. You're right. The, the, the laws change and it's very difficult to talk about this subject because what I say today could be different two months from now. But right. we're travelers and what do we yeah. do? We optimize the trip because we have a strategy on how we do things. So what we're trying to do is teach you strategies. I'm talking about strategies of visas. So what I, the reason why I want your brain is because I know you strategize on how to do this. Now. If we choose the country, and every country is kind of the same. There's always a strategy for that particular country, uniquely to that country, for the visa. Every country is a little bit different and a different strategy. Some places you do border runs. Some places you just hand it to this guy and he renews it every six months. Some places you can overstay, like Dominican Republic where I was at. You could just stay, overstay forever. But let's talk about Ecuador. What's the best strategy? Okay. I'll tell you what's irritating me right now. I get on the website, I'm doing all this research to do, you know, to write a guidebook, a city guide to thing, and it's quite obvious that everybody wants to talk about visas. And you're sitting there going, you guys don't even know if you like the country, and you're already paying money to buy, buy a very expensive visa, a commitment that locks you into a country that you've never even been to. And I've seen people that come down that seem like they already have their residency visa and that's all they're dwelling on. And you're going, why don't you uh, see if you love the girl before you marry her? <laughs> you know, uh, What's the best strategy, in your opinion, for a person that has never been outside the United States to get a visa? Okay. <clears throat> We're talking about Ecuador. Okay. So... When you arrive in Ecuador, you don't need to get a, a visa in advance to come to Ecuador if you... Uh, He's talking from, softly. From most countries, it depends what passport you hold, but most countries don't need a visa to arrive in Ecuador. You so you're going to get 90 days. Yeah, you don't need what they call a visa in advance. You get a visa on arrival at the airport. Right, visa on arrival. And what they what will I give have. you, if you made no arrangements at all, you'll get, you'll get what they call a T3 and that is a tourist three-month visa. Uh, it's good for 90 days. It says three months. Do not be fooled. It's good for 90 days, not three months. If, uh, if those are, are, you know, if two of those months have 31 days in them, be careful. You don't want to overstay your visa. Uh, there can be f fines or uh, other hassles. You know, you don't need hassles. So re realize this first off, it's a 90 days visa, not a three months. Even though it's a T3 for three months, they really mean 90 days. So, yeah, I, mean, don't, uh, don't I know you them. and I, Andy and I have, have <coughs> sat in hotel rooms in front of calendars <laughs> counting how many days. Oh yeah, we, we <laughs> kind of done it. I always, I always leave two days before the final exactly. day, just in case they want to negotiate on that last final day. Right, I always leave mm -hmm. on the 89th day of a 90 day visa or the 29th day or the 28th day. Okay, but say these guys are t they're sitting in America and they want to come down here and retire and they, they got it 
for one thing, to me, it seems quite obvious that how can you choose a country out of the blue to retire right. in? You should at least go to what? How many countries? Well, uh, each person's different as to how many, but my advice would certainly be uh, uh, come here with the, and get the T3 visa, which is free, and there's no paperwork, there's nothing involved. You just show up and they stamp it into your passport. After, after a month or so, two months, if you decide you really like it here and you want to live here, then my advice is that you contact an attorney, there's lots of them, and uh, you start the process of applying for a resident visa. As soon as you start the process, as soon as you, you give the attorney money, you have completed what they call due diligence. And that means that your tourist visa is no longer going to run out. Even if you have a 90-day visa and you're here longer than 90 days, it won't run out while, if the government has accepted your application for your extended visa or your resident visa. Now, accepting your application is not the same as giving you a visa. They can still reject you at the end. But your lawyer will tell you what the requirements are, and if you don't, if you can't fulfill the, the requirements, chances are the lawyer won't make out the application. So if he applies, if he fills out the application, it means you'll get your visa. But uh, I'm sure some of these people think that it's just like an attorney in America where you, they're going to put you on the clock and just let it run, so that's pretty scary. And maybe they go to the attorney in America because they think that they, they can trust this American attorney more. But uh, what did no. you, you told me that you went to an attorney and just uh, cut a deal. Yeah, yeah there's, a, there's, when you go to an attorney, when, well, I went to attorneys in five states in America. When, when you go to an attorney in the U.S., in California, I had a corporation. And uh, there were certain jobs that were just a flat fee. Every year you have to refile for your California LLC, your limited liability corporation. It has to be refiled every year. It's a flat fee. It doesn't, if, it, if there's some tanglement and it takes the lawyer too long, that's his problem. It's just a flat fee. Here, most of the attorneys have a flat fee for your visa. For your visa. So, so for Bill Obama, we'd go to Loja. Yeah. Probably. Or there's 90%, one, one, attorney in, one attorney in town who has an office in Loja and comes here two days a week okay. named Munoz. But most of the attorneys are in Loja. I use a guy named John Espinoza. John Espinoza. Yeah, I don't get paid for any of this. He has a website, John You can, you can send me money, but um, yeah, it's I'm not in, you know, I don't, John is good. He has a, a couple of uh, paralegals that do nothing but visa work. But, so but all of these forms are familiar to them. They've done, it's new to you, but they've done your form a hundred times. But what you said is you came down here, then you decided that you wanted it, then you got your, you talked with this guy, and then you went back to America? No. How did you, how did, you do this? No, once I, uh, uh, well, for me, you know, like as Andy knows, you know, for you you guys don't know this. I had been to Ecuador and to Vilcabamba three times before, and I had a girlfriend here, uh, who I'm I've been living with now for longer than either of my ex-wives. And uh, really, yeah, yeah, yeah. Me and Estelita, me and Estelita are just really happy together. Cool. So okay, so when I came here, I knew that I was going to apply for my cedula, my uh, resident alien card, and uh, so. As soon as I came here, this is how I found a lawyer, I went to the real estate office and asked him if he did a lot of uh, sales to foreigners, and he said, yeah. And I said, what attorney do you use for them to get their, uh, strategy. their stuff worked out? And he says, oh, we always use this guy named John Espinoza. He'll get, he, he knows it back and forward. And I said, okay, then. And he said, in fact, I'm going there tomorrow if you want to ride down with me. And I'm like, okay. And then the next day, so you he got showed an attorney that already has a connection with the right. city. Right. Talk to the real estate has guys. Has a vested interest in the city. Yeah. Talk to the real estate guys because the real estate guys sell real estate to foreigners. The foreigners need to get a visa. So he'll always have a lawyer to to recommend who is used to doing this, who does this with frequency. But you walked into the office and set a set price. Yeah. I went to the office and I said, how much does it cost to get a visa? He said, what kind? And then he told me what kind there were. For example, I might leave something out here, but you can get a work visa, uh, you can get a, a tour, uh, an extended tourist, tourist visa, and, which is only good for six months. You can get uh, a volunteer visa, 
uh, if you want to do volunteer work and it's a registered uh, organization, right. uh, the organization can get you that. That One World Vilcabamba Language School, they get visas for all their language okay. teachers. Yeah. So you get uh, an interview on them. Yeah, and uh, they, Larry and Lori get the visas for them as volunteers. And uh, like two common ones, so you can get a like a college graduate one. That's the professional visa. If you have a bachelor's degree or higher, you can get a professional's degree uh, visa. And uh, uh, so most of these are just a set of paperwork, and uh, it's a flat fee. In other words, uh, he tells you this is how much it's going to cost. He'll itemize that for you. He'll say this is for uh, this department. This is for immigration. This is for uh, in the Ministry of the Interior, blah, 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 and then he'll give you a bottom line, including his fee, and then my attorney uh, uh, told me it might cost perhaps 10% more for notary fees and things that are just going to come up, you know, uh, the cost of sending documents, things like that, but it will not cost any more than that, and I will not charge you any more no matter what happens. And uh, the government isn't going to charge you more. You know, I mean, I'm not, you know, the government could raise their fees, but that's what the fees are now, and that's what it was. So you, you don't, you're not on the clock. Okay, so why do people get visas in, in the United States before they come here? I don't know why. It's not a wise idea. The American lawyer is going to cost you ten times more than the Ecuadorian lawyer will. And you shouldn't, Even like if you Andy. Get cheated, you can pay twice. <laughs> like Andy said in the beginning, you shouldn't get a visa for a country you've never looked at. It's not what you think. Nothing is ever the way you think. Every country I've ever been to was different than I expected. Whatever they wrote about it was something different. Why do they write yeah. one thing and we, we find a different country? <laughs> it's, like, it's like Andy has given this advice a gazillion times. Don't reserve your room on the Internet because the picture you see is not the picture you're going to get. <laughs> and you're reserving so a true. bad room. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it never looks like the picture. That's the picture they took the day after the new furniture and the new paint. Okay. Well, I thought one... I was misunderstanding the other day. I thought... What you're saying is that you could find an attorney, go back home. He gives you a laundry list of things to do, yeah. like maybe you got. So you got to get a, you got to get a uh, police report, right? Yeah. Okay, so you get this laundry list. But to me, a person should come down for three months, to me, two or three times before they actually move down here, or they say they do snowbirding, where they do six months. Because you can get a six-month visa in America, come down here, stay six months, go back home, or go to another country for six months and come back. Because you can only stay in the country right now six months a year, right? I agree 100% with that. Which, you, you know, to me, is a little corrupt in a way. I you hate know. the idea that they force me to leave the country for six months a year. Because a lot of countries, you have border runs and all these things. They're basically saying, oh, make it easier on yourself. Get a, get a resident visa. All of Europe is like that now, man. You get 90 days with the Schengen countries, who 29 countries. Who can afford to, yeah, stay, who can in afford to stay longer? <laughs> who can stay in Europe longer? Than yeah, but you three get months. 90 days, then you have to leave for 90 days I before understand. you can come back for 90 days. Well, that's crazy. It's terrible because you miss the warm weather. Yeah. You I can't get the five months of warm weather <laughs> on that <laughs> system. So if you want to blast the yeah, warm weather yeah. of Europe, which so is... So you, you, you have to leave when it's still warm. Nobody Europe is high. Warm. It's like the height of Canada, so it's cold up there. Yeah. I mean, it's not the same level as America. Even. No, don't get but, your uh, uh, latitude so, mixed up. Okay, so bottom line is we both concur or agree that it's kind of crazy to just come down mm -hmm. here with a visa, resident visa, before you've even, you know, kissed the, kissed the country. Yeah, and I would agree, I think, I think you would agree too, that uh, Although these other countries are close by, there's a lot, there's big differences culturally and economically. Mm -hmm. So it might be a very wise idea to visit Colombia and visit Peru if you think this part, if you want to live on the Pacific coast, uh, Colombia and Peru have, have good beach, beach stuff too. If you go further south to Chile already, the water is too cold to swim in all year. Uh, but if, you know, Colombia and Peru and Ecuador have nice... Have you, have, you met any, them all out. have you met anybody that's got a resident visa, came down here one month and bought a house in the first month? Uh, I, I probably say, have. But don't say I don't, any names. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I probably have, but I'm not. There are a lot of people that do this, and then it, what happens is they wind up... Some of them wind up selling the house or trying to sell the house shortly thereafter because they didn't know the country they were in. And it, it's not like, uh, I don't know where you live now, but it's not like where you live. Uh, no two countries are the same. 
And, you, know, uh, you know you're traveling when you're uncomfortable. Yeah, I mean, uh, <laughs> like if you know other Latin country, man, Ecuador is nothing like Mexico, except they both speak Spanish. Ecuador is nothing like uh, Argentina, except they both speak Spanish. Sure. You know, and they don't even speak Spanish the same. So, you know, I, I would say, I mean, I love all three of those countries I just mentioned. I'd yeah. gladly live. You lived in Mexico a long time. Oh, yeah, I was in and out of Mexico for a year. Yeah, I Mexico is great. Yeah, uh, but it's got a great culture. It's very friendly. But it's a lot food. different than here. Food's better. The food is <laughs> way different than here, way different than here. Yeah. Even the things that have the same name. What if you don't different. like the food of the country you're in? Scary. Uh, yeah, you either get to cook for yourself or find another country. There, this Maybe. is a problem. I, I was in Africa problem. and I didn't like the food that the local food. Had. How many people? How many people have you met in Thailand that left early because they couldn't handle the Thai food? Serious? Yeah. You don't like Thai food? <laughs> well, too spicy for a lot of. Yeah, people. you're right. It would be spicy for yeah. a lot of older people. Yeah, a lot but of people said, "Wow, man, I, 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 can't I, I that do here. require now that if I was going to live for an extended period in a country that I like the food or I have a very good c kitchen with a, a access to a big grocery store, because like right here, there's not very many, uh, s there's not really any supermarkets and uh, big supermarkets like, you know, the Walmart, or, you know, the Maxi, Super Maxi, whatever yeah. size. You have to go to Loja. So it's a little bit difficult to just walk into the supermarket. You have to go to six different places to get all the food you want. Yeah. But so what what I think is happening with these like international living people and these different people on the website or these real estate companies is they, they basically treat at, they come at you like you're an American, like you're just moving from one state to another state and that you're going to be able to buy real estate. But real estate, I was on a, a real estate broker for 14 years. And the time on the market in America, we have this 90 days on the market sell thing. You could have six years on the market before you could sell that house. And it's not a 90 day thing. It's selling a house here is, what's, what do you estimate it takes to sell a house here? I don't know. I've never owned a house anywhere. I don't really, I'm <laughs> really unqualified. But I'll say this, you know, uh, uh, don't let anyone rush you. They're, if, if they're rushing you, they're conning you. That's right. Don't let them rush you. And everything sounds too good. Right. It's they're lying. They're going to say, oh, at this and price. Never, th never deal with a real estate company to move down here. They're going to say, at this price, it's not going to last. I got three people looking at it tomorrow. They are lying. Okay. There's property all over you. the place. Here. Yeah. Yeah. And there's all, there's signs all over the place. And Vilcabamba is the Beverly Hills of Ecuador. Anywhere you go, you'll find cheaper real estate than here. Sure. I just want to throw that out. You won't find better weather, <laughs> but you'll find cheaper real estate. The, re the reason why it's great is it is a paradise climate. This and the like other thing is that you don't have to speak Spanish here. Yeah. This concentration of gringos is so high you can... And they, they cater to us really well. So it's a really good starter country. I mean, if you wanted to start really slow and go into a culture, Vilcabamba. come to Vilcabamba, yeah. because it's so Americanized, it's so English, you can come right. here and you can go then then go interview the more complicated ones like uh, Medellin, Colombia, which is the same you know altitude, Boquete, which is the same altitude, alt elevation. You got uh, Asuay or something. Rose. There's a place in Costa Rica the same elevation. Lake Atalan is the same elevation. They're all sort of paradise climates. But um, then you can also have the beach. You also have two. You have two types of people. You have the mountain people, then you have the beach people. But this idea of getting the, the visa before you can, you... can you think of any reason to get a visa for a person that's only been out to one country in their life? No, I think, I think 90 days is enough to... Uh, Ecuador is a small country, man. 90 days is enough to check the place out. If you want to extend the visa, you can. Sure. It costs the same amount of money to extend uh, for another three months when you're down here as it does to get a six-month visa to begin with. So at the end, as far as money goes, you're going to pay the same price for six months either way you do it. Can you There's extend no it with the guy in Loja? Yeah. Okay, oh, yeah. I was any that any immigration lawyer will tell you what to do. They'll charge you uh, $50 or something and uh, they'll, so they'll give you a sheet of paper with nine easy steps and follow them steps. So if you wanted to, you could come down here for two months, get a three-month visa, just fly in then go to the lawyer in Loja two months into it and extend it for another three months and stay six months and no hassles, no fuss. Well, uh, what you'll have to do if you do it that way, which to me is no hassle or fuss, but you be the judge, is uh, you have to go to Peru and uh, go to the consulate 
the Ecuadorian consulate in Peru. Uh, they have one in Piura. Uh, and no, and they have one in Machala now too, which is even a lot closer than Piura. It's only four hours away by bus. You go in. Uh, if you use an attorney, all your paperwork is already filled out. You go in, you give them the paperwork. You sit around for a little while, and then they give you uh, a bunch of stuff signed, and uh, you go back. That's it. You know, you know, one thing's interesting to me. I've, I've talked to so many people in this city that haven't been to Peru, and they haven't been to any other country close to here. And I'm going, how can you live here for five years and not uh, just, you know, say what the hell? To me too. Because in a way, what they're they must be f afraid of something. And really, if you're that afraid to just go to the next country down the down, it's like moving from Indiana to Ohio, right? I mean, you're just going to the next country down. It's a couple bus trips, and you're there. But we're we're itchy feet people. Yeah, but and I mean, a lot of, a lot of people yeah, don't you, like to travel like we do. I know that, but you, you still got to sit there and say, there's got to be something something wrong here if you're so afraid to move from one country to the next country and not only that, why are you living in Ecuador you should stay at home and not only that if you're not willing to go to two or three countries then you're not you're not even brave enough to be here <laughs> Andy and I will both tell you uh, the two neighboring countries the two easiest countries to get to Colombia and Peru are just nothing but fun. Oh yeah, they're great. Beautiful. Com Colombia is highly educated too. Edu uh, Colombia is a wonderful country. I mean, Peru's uh, got the, the Peru's got everything. It's got the Amazon. It's got the desert. It's got the beach. It's got the mountains. It's got these uh, surfing in one area. It's got a couple. It's got all sorts of stuff. A couple of years ago, Bogota, the capital of Colombia, had the lowest murder rate of any city of over a million people in yeah. all, of, uh, all of South America. But it's a big Everybody city. thinks Colombia is full of gangsters and, sh you know, uh, narco traffic guys with RPGs on the roof and stuff. I want to go back to Medellin. I, I consider Medellin as having uh, Colombia I love as having Medellin. some of the most beautiful girls on the planet. Absolutely, I love Medellin. I loved it. I've been there three three times, and Medellin. I love that. Yeah, I love that city. One of my favorite cities. And I've been I been to Bogota three times, I think. I have to agree that uh, uh, Colombia, you know, uh, they have a beauty culture. They have a, a beauty contest culture. There's a miss everywhere. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. just beauty contests from the time the girls are in, like, well, you know, grade school. And they, they're the Colombian women will invest much more money on their appearance than, for instance, the Bolivian women will. Oh, yeah, they're beautiful. They're and they work educated, at it. The higher level of education. Brazil and, and Venezuela, too, the women you really know, work at it. I think a lot of these people are afraid that they, they basically are afraid they're going to have to get... They got They're moving places, just like if I was in Indiana, I wanted to move to Ohio. I'm going to have to rent a place, and then I'm going to have to buy a house, and I've got all this money, so I better put it in a house or something. But uh, there's so many. I, I bet I'm estimating right now there's 50 apartments that are renting in this city on the second floor. That's the sad part. They're on the second floor for $150 a month. I've been counting them. It's, it's, it's just endless. I couldn't say. I, I know that there's a lot of places. Just on my map, that. I have about 20. And I think, uh, you know, again, uh, when people try to rush you, they're conning you. And uh, you should, you can come down here, trust me, you can come down here and get a room, uh, a real nice Holiday Inn style room for $20 a night. And there's nothing to... There will always be, unless you come on like Christmas you know, Eve or something, there's what, always going to be vacancies. What's funny on these apartments, three of my friends have got three-bedroom apartments, single guys living in three-bedroom apartments. Yeah, and what are they paying? And they're paying $300 a month. Yeah. But I mean, you know, and $300 a month is a small fortune down here. <laughs> yeah, they're, you know. But you can get a little, I, on the guidebook and everything I'm writing, I'll show you a map of all the places that are available. And, there's all, it's such a small place, and there's so many gringos. You can go hang out at Charlito's and just say, I'm looking for a place. And probably somebody will go, well, there's kind of a place over there. There's a place over there. And then you get good. But you're also, we understand, too, that if you don't speak Spanish, it is intimidating. But this is one of the least intimidating <laughs> places I've ever been. In fact, I, I wish I spoke Spanish more here. <laughs> yeah, Vilcabamba. I mean, this is one of the complaints of the expats that live here is that they it's so hard to learn Spanish because they're speaking English all the time. Oh, how could you? There's no immersion. <laughs> no. Okay, so the, the best recommendation, the best strategy here would be to at least come down, get a three-month, you know, you're going to get a three-month visa on arrival. Get a taste, you know, take a lick before you take a bite, right? 
and uh, you know, don't don't marry anything. And if anybody's pushing you, they're probably conning you. And don't let them trust me. You. There's so many con men on the internet, and trust me, I make all my money from the internet. And this is one reason why I make these videos with uh, Bob even, is because he's, he's one of the few people I can actually get to just spit out the truth, <laughs> okay? W one more thing I should mention, when I, any time that I say a hotel price, it's usually a per person price and not a per room yeah, price. Yeah, that is a little bit of a problem. In, in the U.S. and in most of Europe, which I'm thinking a lot of your viewers are from, uh, it's usually a room price, and then if it's another person, it'll go from $75 to $80 or something like that. But here, it's usually a per person price. Yeah, you really need to, we need to, he's got to go, okay, thank you, Andy Graham of Hobo Traveler with Bob W. here in Vilcabamba, Ecuador. We can